Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so listen, man, this 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 fighter right here, he's he's been long overdue a True School Sports video, and I and I and I, I want to hold myself accountable and say that it's a crime against boxing that I never gave this man a video, but um, better late than never, right? In this video, we're talking about that man right there, Salinas, California's very own Ruben Villa. And um, when you talk about the top contenders, the top fighters in the featherweight division, you got to talk about this man right here, right? Because he's got a lot of substance on that resume, a lot of uh, things to, to discuss on that resume. And he's a really, really top fighter. Just just being honest, you know, he doesn't make the headlines a lot because, you know, maybe, maybe, um, Maybe it's because he doesn't talk, and he's just a he's just a serious fighter, right? And sometimes the guys that that don't that don't do as much talking, they can get lost in the fold at times. And so, um, really good fighter, and I, and I think he's someone that's gonna be someone to watch in the featherweight division this year. I, I think twenty twenty four is going to be the year of the featherweight division, and Ruben Villa will be one of the names that that you gotta watch out for, right? So let, let, let's talk about him, right? Because he never got a true school sports video now. He's 21 and 1, seven knockouts, but when you look at the the resume, right? Um the most notable win on his resume was probably I would say is definitely I would say his 2019 win over uh the current IBF featherweight champion, uh Venado Lopez, right? And the crazy thing is when he when he beat Venado Lopez, like it wasn't a big win at the time. Like it wasn't looked at to be this great win. It was it was a good win. It was a solid win. It was on Showbox. Um, it was it was looked at to be a, a test that he passed, but like many times in boxing, sometimes you beat a guy and they go on to do some great things and become champion, and the win ages like wine, and and, and it's aged like wine for him. And um, I spoke to his trainer, uh, one of his trainers, Sam Garcia, at the WBA convention, and he had expressed to me that 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 Venado Lopez has been very much staying away from the rematch ever since uh you know he became champion. So he don't want, he don't he don't really want that smoke. But when you look at just the three fight run he had from May of 2019 to January of 2020 was I I think was pretty good because he beat Venado Lopez. He then turned around and took the O of Enrique Vivas. Enrique Vivas is like one of the best volume punchers in this weight class. And then he beat you know solid veteran Alexi Collado for the WBO the, the WBO international title right. And so he's been doing his thing, picking up some good wins. He picked up a win against Brandon Valdez, who's a good little fighter. In his last fight, but um, look, Villa is someone that he's a legitimate contender in this weight class. You know, normally sometimes when you, when you look at these rankings, sometimes a fighter may be ranked in one sanctioning body, and sometimes when you see that, you kind of raise your eyebrows. But he's not one of those guys. He's ranked in all four sanctioning bodies. So if you want to talk WBC, he's there. If you want to talk about WBA, he's there. You want to talk IBF, he's there. You talk about WBO, he's there. So he's a factor. In this featherweight division, in a year where it's going to be massive for the featherweight division, so let, let's let's run through it right quick. Ruben Villa is currently your number two ranked WBC contender. He is number thirteen in the WBA. He is number what eleven in the IBF, and he is number seven in the WBO. So he's ranked in all four sanctioning bodies now. Obviously, the, the 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 route that's probably the the most um, the title he's probably the closest to fighting for is the WBC belt. You know, obviously Ray Vargas has to fight Brandon Figueroa, but they've been taking forever to make that fight happen. So that's kind of holding him up. So he's trying to go a other route because that, that that's not really doing much right now. But uh, Nick Ball's the number one contender. Maybe that that winds up being a fight that he can make later on this year because Nick Ball, very explosive fighter in the weight class. Um, Big, big, stocky guy, you know, kind of a bully. I, I call him the scouts, Javante Davis. That that would be a great fight for the division, number one versus number two. Um, one thing about Villa, and I can say this about him and you know, watching him fight, you know, because right now his, his, the only loss of his career is to Vaquero Navarrete. He's only lost to a great fighter. You know, Navarrete is a guy that is so unorthodox, breaks so many rules, but makes it work for him. And he, and he wound up dropping Ruben Villa twice and route to a... So went over him. But other than that, everyone who's who's fought Ruben Villa has gotten dealt with. But one thing that makes Villa so good is I think it's his feet. You know, he's very good at controlling the range and the pace of a fight with his feet. 
he can get he can get the opponents to reach and overcommit on punches and 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 do whatever he wants pretty much and that's one of the things that makes him a really really top fighter a top contender in this weight class right so um no shortage of great of great options for him at this moment in time and as far as Via, right, and I want to run through this as well because I was I was going through and I was looking at his amateur uh, background, like his amateur, the guys being the amateurs, you know, because a lot of times you can kind of get a, a gauge of what kind of a caliber a fighter is or could be by the fighters he beat. And man, oh man, did Ruben Via beat some names as as an amateur? I mean, let's let's run through it. He beat Carlos Balderas as an amateur. He beat Duke Reagan as an amateur. Uh, he holds a win over, you know, one of Southfield's very own, a guy I class highly, and uh, Lawrence New and beat him a couple of times as an amateur. Um, you see, he beat Logan Yoon, who was supposed to be something in boxing, but, you know, he beat, you know, didn't pan out, but good fighter. Beat him as an amateur. Beat uh, Devin Haney, beat him as an amateur in the 2013 uh, JL Nationals. Beat Jorge Castaneda, beat Antonio Bang Williams, beat Elijah Pierce, beat Stephen Fulton, beat Gary Antonio Russell. Who else did he beat? Beat Shakur Stevenson in the amateurs. Uh, beat him a couple times. He beat Shakur Stevenson a couple times in the amateurs, actually. Uh, beat Duke Reagan a couple times in the amateurs. So he's got wins over notable, real deal fighters. So just off of the amateur exploits alone, you know that Ruben V is a real fighter. Just off of the real fighters he's fought in the professional ranks, you know he's a real fighter. But one thing about Ruben Villa, he's he's not a big talker, right? So sometimes he can slip through the cracks, but you know... He has a lot of substance and a lot of things to offer this featherweight division. And I feel like, you know what? In in 2024, he is one of the guys to look at. I would I would classify him as a bit of a dark horse because he doesn't really talk a lot, right? And so he, people don't talk about him as much as they should. But he's a damn good fighter. And I'm hoping that they sort that whole Brandon Figueroa, Ray Vargas thing out. And then maybe uh, he could fight Nick Ball and like a, a, a real proper final eliminator. And if he can get past that, which would be a tough fight. Then you're looking at, you know, a world title shot in 2024. Or, better yet, it'd be nice if he could, he could get the fight with um Venato for the world title. But, you know, that he's kind of like, he's not high enough on the rankings yet. So that, that might not happen for him. But uh, nonetheless, he's, he's going to be a factor in the, in the featherweight division. I just want to make this video about him because it's a crime against boxing that I never talked about him. But I guess in a sense, it's good that I interviewed Sam Garcia. So now Ruben's a little bit more on my radar than, than he is. So, you know, it is what it is. But, uh. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What, what do you think about Ruben Villa? You know, can he be champion? Who do you think he has the best chance against other champions? Uh, Espinosa, Vargas, Venado. Who do you want to see him against? Um, and yeah, um, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.